All right, welcome to the internet podcast with Chris Ducker and Tyrone Shum on the tyroneshum.com blog. It's a real pleasure to be able to have Chris on the call today. He's a special guest and I wanted to share with you today on the call a little bit more about what Chris does because he's a real expert in the outsourcing field and it's really interesting to be able to see because he's living in the Philippines what he's currently doing out there and how he's been able to achieve an excellent, excellent and growing a massive business over there. So welcome, Chris, to the call. And hello, Tyron. How are you? <laughs> good, mate. Good. Very good. Well, I, I firstly, wanted to start off with you is uh, let's start off with just maybe sharing your story with the audience and uh, letting people know what you currently do. Also, where you're living in the Philippines and also, yeah, what's your story? Okay. Well, I'll give you the nutshell because it's... it's uh, it's, it's approaching 40 years in terms of a life story. So, so you see, I don't have any hair left because of that fact. Um, so uh, I'll give you it in a nutshell. Um, 20 years in business, um, uh, majority around the telemarketing industry. And um, uh, 12 years ago, I came out to Asia. Uh, started working originally in Hong Kong uh, in the film industry over there. Uh, doing film distribution, and then I stumbled across to the Philippines, the beautiful islands of the Philippines, uh, for a, a long weekend, and kind of fell in love with the place. To be honest with you, so um, came up, came back, made some good friends, uh, did some consultancy work, and five years ago, that was ten years ago when I first eventually came to the Philippines, and then five years ago I uh, I, I opened up my my own company and and uh, started to build um, things up from the ground over here we had seven people when we started including myself and my wife and uh now we have about 213 i think something like that or or close to it something along those lines i gotta ask you what what enticed you to move from yeah europe or, or i should say uk right into the philippines yeah. that, that would, that's a major move and a major change to your lifestyle yeah i mean it was um because I'd been traveling to Asia quite, quite frequently in that couple of years when I was working in and out of Hong Kong quite a bit, um, I, kind of, I, I guess I probably got the bug for Asia uh, more than anything else because I didn't just do Hong Kong. You know, I, I, I popped over to Singapore, went over to Malaysia, did a little bit in Thailand. You know, when you're in the region, it's so easy to travel around, as you probably know. Yep. And um, mm -hmm. so you know, I, 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 it got to the point where there was a couple of personal, um, personal circumstances back in the UK uh, that were quite life-changing events for me, and I felt, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of just screw it for a bit and just see what happens. And I was very, very lucky to um, get some great, you know, two or three years of great consultancy work over here, based over in Manila, and um, eventually stumbled across uh, Cebu City, which is where I'm based full time now. Uh, with HSBC, they hired me to come over and basically train their telemarketers here. Uh, work with their telemarketing team, and um, uh, the rest is a little bit of history, as they say, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So you've been there now for at least five years, as you said. Uh, you've known this area for the last 10 years or so. So over those last five years, what have you accomplished in terms of your business? And uh, tell, share with the audience exactly what this business is as well. Well, fundamentally, we're an outsourcing company. Um, we, we work in three major um, fields, which is customer service, so all of those sort of order taking, 1-800 numbers, inbound work. Uh, we also do quite a bit of telemarketing, so lead generation, appointment setting, uh, database cleansing, surveys, that sort of stuff. And then probably for the last couple of years, we've, uh, we've been quite focused on the virtual assistant aspect of outsourcing. But you know, it's it's a lot more than just a freelancing thing where you're working with a home-based staff. Obviously, they have the the huge infrastructure that we have as a facility um, and everything that goes with that. So, and that that part of the business actually is the one that's really, if you were to look at it seat by seat, client by client ratio, that's the one that's grown faster than anything else in the last couple of years. Um, but the telemarketing probably still has uh, probably still has. Uh, the lead a little bit on on anything else that we do. We're kind of known for our telemarketing and our and our sort of lead generation and things like that. But I mean, yeah, it, it we actually when we started out five years ago, we started out doing nothing but telemarketing mm. because that's what I knew. Plain yeah. simple. Uh, e even even though I had been in contact centers and call centers here in the Philippines 
for training purposes and for consultancy work and management work and things like that. Um, you know, I knew the industry, I knew the outsourcing world, um, and I'd been involved in it pretty much since the day I arrived in the country 10 years ago. Um, but it, it wasn't really until, like I said, around 2000, middle of 2005, where I decided, hang on, wait a minute, there's way too much money being made in this, in this lark. I want to get, I need to get involved with this. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we did, we literally started off with seven members of staff. Um, we had a facility which was good for about 30, uh, but we only built desks for about 15 of them. Uh, and, you know, literally eight weeks later, we're building the extra 15 desks. And then three, three, three months into it, we've got the 30 people working for us. And, and we actually stayed as a pretty small outsourcing company for about a year and a half or so. There was no more than about 50 people working for us um, for a while. Uh, and it was nice because we were still kind of finding our way a little bit. We were still learning how to market ourselves properly and things like that. And you fast forward five, five years later, we now have three floors in the building where we are. And like I said, almost you know, 220 odd people working for us. So it's, it's moved very quickly the last few years. The last three years has seen the real major growth for us, um, and it, it's man, it's been a roller coaster. I can tell you, it's it's not simple running a growing organization in the Philippines. It's a tough country to do business in, um, regardless, regardless of what other you know people might say about it. You know, being paralyzed to work in and all the rest of it. Yes, you know, I'm 30 minutes away from the beach, and the resorts are beautiful, and the water is you know crystal clear, and the fish are gorgeous, and all the rest of it. But if you're here to make money and do business on a on a global scale, based here, it's a slightly different ball game. You know, we were talking about it a little bit before you hit the record button, and it, it really uh, it it it's not as easy as most most people think. Particularly when you're talking about you know several hundred people working for you, it's it's a tough caper over here. Exactly. Sometimes exactly, you're not just dealing with one or two people; you're dealing with a couple hundred people. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, a, a lot of people would be actually curious about from jumping from that 50 to say 200 people in that span of time. Did you get the demand first before you decided to fill the seats, or was it like basically you just said, "Okay, look, we're looking to target it growing at this pace. I need to get these seats put in there." Which, which was it first? Sure. Um, well, like I said, when we first set up, we had a we had a, a relatively small area uh, on the fifth floor of the building, mm. which is now where my my personal office is, where I'm sitting right now, um, and. That space was good for 30. We expanded it to about good for about 60 after about eight or nine months of being in business. Mm -hmm. And then we filled it up. And we, like I said, we basically stayed at that sort of level for a year and a half, two years or so. Um, but I think we went from 60 to about 100. We built out. We're very lucky. We're, we're in a building where the landlord in our contract, we, we had it written into the contract that he would give his first right of refusal on any space in the building. Um, so it was a, it was a relatively um, old building, about 10 years old, mm. but the infrastructure is great, you know, cable wise, everything like that. Um, and that we're actually above the number one Hyundai dealership in the entire country. It's a five story <laughs> building. The, the first story is obviously nothing but cars, cars right? Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's a very easy place. You know, when we have clients come in and visit us, they say, how do I find your office? And we say, well, blah, 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 street. And they say, where the hell is that? Just get in a taxi and tell them to take you to the Hyundai <laughs> building. They'll be able to find it. <laughs> it's a very big showroom. Um, so, um, Just make sure your virtual yeah, but, staff don't go downstairs and start test driving the cars and put it on your credit that's card. That's right, exactly. Yeah, they've got to lock them up, they've got to lock them up pretty, pretty good. Uh, but no, I mean, it, it, was, it was something that was planned, I think, in every major growth step. Um, you know, we, we would consistently have seats empty waiting to be filled. So we would build out and then fill them up and then build out a little bit more and then fill them, uh, fill them up. Um, so we went from the fifth floor to a relatively small area then we took the entire third floor, which is kind of our, our own showroom, I guess, where we have the lobby and the conference room, the training room and the chill out lounge for the staff and pantry area and then the entire floor all our server is down you know all our servers are down there everything is there and then we also then took uh, about three quarters of the second floor for additional uh, calling space and, and VA space as well nice. so it, it, it's slowly but surely we got about we've got about 40 seats empty right now um, but I mean they'll be filled by the end of the year 
Yeah, easy, easy. Okay. Well, that, that's interesting because what we're going to probably now talk about is I, I want to jump over to your blog that you've created called The Virtual Business Lifestyle. And this is how Chris and I actually met was I contacted Chris through The Virtual Business Lifestyle blog and also I think I, I sent you a message via Facebook as well and Twitter and we got in contact and we just started chatting and then this is how we came across our interview. But it was very interesting because we complemented each other really well because we're, we're both in the outsourcing field and we like to teach people and we also have very, very much the similar mindset. So mm. what I wanted to also ask as well too for the audience's sake is to ask you what inspired you to create this blog firstly? Um, my wife actually. <laughs> okay. That's as, <laughs> As with as with most um, as with most uh, lucky guys, there's and um, you know there's usually a decent a decent woman behind or to the side of them, um, and uh, sometimes in front. Um, but I. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, it, it, no, no, no! I mean, leading the way, Tyro, <laughs> leading the bloody way, right? Come on, this is a yeah. family this production a family we're talking channel, about. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, terrible. She won't watch this one. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, you've completely lost me now. Right, okay. But right, here we go. <laughs> it, it was my wife's idea to start the blog. Yeah. And um, it was basically, it came about because uh, last year, uh, I think it was around the, the end of the first quarter, I started my own blog, ChrisTucker.com, which is now no more. Um, but I started it, and I started talking about anything and everything you can you can think of. Um, and funnily enough, one of the most um, successful posts on the blog was about outsourcing and, uh, you know, how, what it is, how it works, how to do it, how not to do it. And it was quite a monster post. I mean, it's a good couple of thousand words. And um, usually when you get a long blog post like that, people scroll like, geez, I'm not going to read all that. That's insane. But, you know, it became very popular. There was about... Uh, 70 or 80 comments on there uh, by the time I, I took it off. I mean, that's obviously over a period of months. But, I mean, for a blog that came out of nowhere, it became quite popular. Exactly, and yeah. I, noticed, I noticed that all of the posts that I would be putting on there that, re that were in relation to creating, you know, a kind of a more freer lifestyle um, but still revolving around business, right, so you can make money, um, and living more of a more of a virtual kind of life of being able to travel, you know, with, seamlessly and work at the same time and things like that. I noticed it was those particular posts that were showing all the real interest on the blog. You know, I mean, I I, I did a I, I did a post about how I had a fantastic experience at Starbucks with my son uh, and the staff at Starbucks, and I loved writing that blog post because it was very close to my heart. But I had like five comments on it, right? So, <laughs> you know, that wasn't a very popular blog post. I thought it was great, but um, you know, it, it just it didn't it didn't quite you know float with the with the audience. Yeah. But you know, the the bottom line here is that it became you know those kind of posts became quite popular. And so we sat down over the Christmas period, and I was sort of strategizing a little bit for this year for growth and things like that, and making some key hires. And it just sort of it went into one. You know, one one thing led to another, and she said to me, "You know what you should do? You should create a site where you're giving away advice and and starting discussions and and a community where people can come and talk about that kind of lifestyle design and you know still revolving around business, but with a real heavy twist on outsourcing and virtual staff and things like that, because that's what I that's what I do, it's what I know exactly." Yeah, and, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And it kind of just hit me, and I was like, okay, what am I going to call it? And she, I, I've got to give the credit to her. She came up with a name. She came up with everything. It was, not, it was not down to me in any way whatsoever, which is quite ironic because, you know, I've been involved in, you know, marketing and sales and branding my whole, my whole career, and I, I didn't come up with a single thing. So <laughs> it was all down to her. So, um, honey, if you're watching, thank you. It's and, always um, them. It's always the, the partners it. are always <laughs> giving us good names. But we don't. We shouldn't really tell them too much, right? <laughs> uh, it, that that will create problems at some point. But no, it, and and it just man, it's just snowballed. I mean, it. You know, we launched it middle of. We're up to. We're a week away from being um, six months old, and it's just 
spiral. Yeah. I've been interviewed by so many people, um, and you know, I get asked literally daily to do get guest posts for people and things like that. So, and the the big the big thing surrounding the blog is my goal for this year, and that was the main reason. That was the main focus when we launched it. I launched it with a video post, and I told everybody about my 2010 goal. A lot of people have kind of quite a few goals that they want to achieve every year, but I, I wanted to put together the mother of all goals, and that is to completely and utterly remove myself from this brick-and-mortar business on a day-to-day -day basis and become a full-time virtual CEO by the end of this year. Uh, and so without giving the entire game away because no one would ever come and visit the blog otherwise, the bottom line is that um, I've broken the goal down to month by month miniature goals, uh, which I've achieved. In fact, actually, I'm about three weeks ahead uh, of June so far. Um, and slowly but surely, it's developing the one big major requirement for this goal to be hit is for me to hire another foreigner, another expat, as we call them here in the Philippines. Predominantly, they have to be American because 80% of our market is in America. Um, and uh, once I hire that one person, um, the rest is just, it's just icing on the cake, really. Once I've got that person, they can fundamentally do what I do every day here myself. Um, you know, I, I can, I can lead. I might even hit the goal sooner if I can find the right person. I don't know. That is great. I mean, looking, looking at replacing yourself is, is something that I think a lot of people want to be able to achieve. And if you can achieve it in what you, in the scale of your business, <laughs> I think there, there's a huge, huge market out there who wants to be able to follow in your footsteps. And I, I'm for one who's, who's really, really excited because I'm, I've been following your goals as well too. And it's just really interesting to be able to learn so much from it because I, I'm, I'm sort of on the smaller scale of things, but I'm still quite happy with what I've got and achieved here. And for the people who want to achieve also the same thing as what Chris is doing, it, this is a fantastic way to be able to learn how he's done it. And it's a, it's a real inspiration to be able to learn straight from you because you are doing what you do. You know, you, you walk your footsteps and you really do walk your, your talk as well too. But uh, in well, on, on the blog itself, just so just so your viewers know, on the blog itself, there are actually monthly reports that I produce at the end of every month, where I talk about what I did that month to get myself one step closer mm. to that ultimate goal. And when I say virtual, I mean completely virtual. I don't want this chair. I don't want this nice office. I don't want a place that is Chris's place in this building for my company. I want to. I will come into the office once a week for a two-hour management meeting, and that is it. Yep. That is it. The rest of the time, I'll work out of my home office because I'm completely set up at home as well. So I'll work out of my home office and uh, anywhere else I want to. That's the whole deal. Exactly. So do you, do you see yourself as well, once you've created this CEO, virtual CEO, what, what do you see yourself doing once you've got yourself out of the business and, and working less? Because I know, I think you're... Absolutely you're nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. I would go stir crazy doing nothing every day. I, I don't understand what people say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people say, oh, you know, I'm going to sell my company. I'm going to get $10 million and then, you know, I'm not doing anything for the rest of my life. And I'm like, how boring and crap is that? I mean, that's just so crap. Why would you want to do that? Um, no, I... I uh, I, I, I have a couple of other business interests that I don't really focus on right now um, that I would like to focus on to see what I can make of them. Um, they don't really make me a whole lot of money. They do okay. Um, but uh, I also have a lot of plans for the online world um, in producing um, very high quality uh, information products um, for um, uh, aspiring you know lifestyle designers and yeah. and virtual you know uh, bosses and things like that um, but but they're, they're, they really are honestly they're not happening this year um, I, I will launch uh, I'm actually going to be launching a brand new service in July which will bridge the gap between the service provided virtual staff and the freelancing virtual staff it'll bridge the gap perfectly uh, in regards to the 
uneasiness uh, and the unreliable kind of factor of working with freelancers from time to time. We're completely eliminating that sort of stuff. And I can't really go into much more about it now because we're still finalizing it. But um, when the time is right, I'll definitely tell you about it so you can let you guys know. Yep. Um, but the, the bottom line is that that's the one, you know, that's the one online project that we're launching. Um, and I'll probably, I, I think I've, I'm about halfway through an ebook in regards to working with virtual staff as well, which is really just a it's a it's a very condensed ebook. It's not one of those waffling ebooks which is 120 pages long, you know, and you know looks pretty and things like that. It it, it will still look pretty, yeah. um, but uh, it won't be 120 pages long. And I, I mean, I'll to be honest with you, price wise, I'm going to be literally giving it away. I, I just want to get it out there to give people the opportunity to um, you know learn from it a little bit. But the, no, the, there's there's going to be a lot of um, different things, and that's the whole point is about diversifying your income <clears throat> and um, creating several streams of passive income, which is part of the process for the virtual business lifestyle. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm 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 a pretty flexible fellow. I'm not one of those guys that sort of is really rigid in the way that he does business. There's no right and wrong way. There's only you know your way to do business, and that's why I think you know you mentioned that you're quite happy with what you're doing right now and the money you're making, the way you're living your life. Then you're a success. You are Everybody, already a success. Everybody's got you know? their own definition of success. It doesn't necessarily mean that's that right. you've got to get other people's approval. As long as you're happy within your own life, you could be making, I don't know, $500 a week and living yeah. a lifestyle that you enjoy. And I know that there's exactly. plenty of people in the Philippines that are doing that as well. And then there's people Absolutely. who are making a million dollars a year and, and unhappy. So it, it, you got yep. to look at what success is defined to you, not other yep. people's successes. So absolutely agree absolutely. with you on that one. Hey, yeah, would yeah. you would you be interested in um, going back to the UK or the US once once you've created this virtual business lifestyle or virtual uh, so you plan to stay in Philippines? Full time, probably not. To be frank with you, mm. um, I do want to I, I do want to spend a little bit more time in the United States, um, mainly for business reasons. Um, I get over there once a year, pretty religiously, and I'm usually there for about a month at a time when I am there. Um, and uh, for the last year, I've actually been taking, and I'm quote, I'm going to quote Mr. Ferris here. I've been taking mini, uh, what do you call mini retirements? Mini retirements, exactly. <laughs> uh, where I've been doing a month here and there, and uh, I've really enjoyed them. And I've also found that even though I'm on supposedly the mini retirement, I'm still working a little bit. But I've been incredibly, incredibly productive in that kind of setting, um, and. Uh, so I, I want to, you know, I want to do a little bit more of that. I want to do a little bit more traveling with my family as well, uh, and and we'll we'll see what happens for him. But as for going back full time, I mean, for the UK, absolutely not. No way. No, 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 no. The UK now, the UK now is a completely different country to the one that I grew up in and enjoyed growing up in. Um, you know, I go back there now and I I find myself shaking my head and I'm. It's just, it's not. And you, you ask anybody, anybody my age in the UK will say exactly the same thing. If they're not, if they can't say exactly the same thing, they're either blind and deaf <laughs> or they're just a complete mental case because the, 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 the place is just, it's going to crap. It really is. It's just, it's not the same country. So it's, look, I'm, uh, I'm English. I'm patriotic uh, to a certain degree. I'll, I'm going to be cheering the lads on, you know, tomorrow and things like that and doing all that stuff. Right. But the bottom, the, the the bottom line is that I would not want to live in the UK full time again. I wouldn't want to do it. So um, the US is a good one. Both both myself and my wife enjoy the US, and uh, we are eyeing um, San Francisco or LA, one of the two. Nice. Uh, for maybe a little, uh, you know, a, a good quality six or eight weeks at the beginning of next year. Um, we'll also probably do a month in England as well. Uh, and we'll see what else happens. But there you go. But that month will be July, August month. That will be the warm months. Not not doing the, the rain. Robots. Definitely no way going back there. Totally, totally understand. No. Nice. All right. We're well, spoiled here in the Philippines. Yeah. You know, the, the weather is so beautiful all the time. We're completely spoiled. You know. <laughs> well, you're lucky because at the moment in Sydney, it's freezing today, and it's been freezing for the last few months. So <laughs> can't wait till the warm right. weather kicks in. But when you when the summer does come around, definitely come down under to Australia. It's a nice place and uh, check it out. As you well know too. what? I've always wanted to come over. I've just never gotten around to it. I'm only eight nine hours away from it or whatever it is, exactly. and it's just as easy to get on. I know it's just as easy to get on the plane and go to Sydney or Perth or Melbourne or wherever wherever anybody is 
than it is to get on a plane, go to Hong Kong or anyone yeah. else. It's just slightly longer. Know, and a little bit more expensive, but that, you know that's neither here nor there. I will have to do Australia. Actually, I, I I've never done it. I have always wanted to. So um, you know, maybe you can pick me up from the airport. What yeah, do you, think? you know, <laughs> whenever that happens. So. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, I've, I want to sort of go on to a little bit more on to helping as well, giving some valuable content. Not that we haven't been giving a lot of content today, but. For anyone yeah. who's starting out as their internet business and who are looking just to outsource as well, what three tips or advice can you give to people who are looking to outsource to, say, the Philippines and want to be able to create a virtual business like yourself? Um, three tips. Uh, okay, there's really two major ways to be able to outsource to the Philippines. The first one is with a, is, is with a provider like our company. Um, somebody who is set up in a relatively large building with a great infrastructure, management, all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And then you can outsource in the freelance way. Um, and I think probably a lot of people that are going to be watching this and visiting your blog as well as mine, to be very frank, yep. <laughs> um, are probably going to be more uh, leaning towards the freelancer route because um, it's the cheaper version, quite frankly, plain and simple. Right. Uh, so we'll focus on that one. Otherwise, I'll just be waffling on, and everyone will be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, get to the freelancer stuff, <laughs> all do." Right? So, um, that, so that's what I'll focus on. When you're working with a freelancer, there are three major tips that I usually give out. The first one is to um, make sure that you make your uh, your expectations of your virtual assistant very, very, very clear uh, in terms of the way that you want work done, the way you want it produced. I mean, I'm talking about, I, I'm a detail freak, so right the way down to what font you use, what, you know, what Specific, size of the font yeah. you want to use, everything. Because ultimately, it will, you might have to spend a little bit of time going through those specifics and being real clear on things at the beginning of your relationship, but ultimately, it'll mean that you don't have to correct them all the time. That's right. Um, and, uh, correcting somebody at a distance, particularly if they're on a different time zone, is a hell of a lot harder um, and time consuming than it is if they were just in the same office with you and you could talk to each other over the same desk. So, you know, I mean, I have the luxury of having a personal assistant here in the office, literally on the other side of that wall over there. Um, and she's, she's spectacular. But I also actually hire and work with two virtual assistants as well that are not anything to do with my company. The reason why I do that, uh, the main reason why I started it is because I wanted to experience the freelancer route myself. Uh, so I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking to the readers of the blog and things like that. But as time has progressed with both of those, I've been working with them for about five or six months now. Uh, no, that's a, bit, that's a bit of a lie, about four months now. Um, and I, I now utilize them very heavily every single day. They're both on the full-time payroll for me, um, and they're both fantastic. And funnily enough, they're both actually here in Cebu. So I do get to meet up with them once or so a month, and I buy them pizza and ice cream and stuff like that, and everybody's happy. Um, but getting back to the question, the first one is be real clear on your expectations. The second one is to, um, when you're working with tasks, is to put timelines in place. Um, because if you don't, nothing's really prioritized. Um, you'll find that VAs do need that kind of guidance really, really heavily in terms of timelines because, you know, you're not just giving one task a day. You're going to give them several tasks and then there's going to be what I call those revolving tasks that they have to do every day, whether it be, you know, comment on blogs for you or send tweets on your behalf or whatever the case may be. Um, so you have to, you know, with any major project or any major task, you have to put timelines in place. And the third one is a very simple tip. Pay them on time. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Simple as that. Telling you right now in the Philippines, particularly with the freelancing virtual assistants that I've met and, and, and I've met, I mean, I've done seminars and everything here for them. So, I mean, I've met hundreds of freelancing VAs over here, everything from admin assistants to, you know, web programmers. And I can tell you right now, the number one gripe, number one gripe with virtual assistants in the Philippines, and th let this be a lesson to all of you out there, <laughs> is getting paid late. Because here it's not about generally building a career, it's about job security, job stability, yep. and you know, when you know, a week before payday is, is, is here, they've already spent the money. You know, they're giving this to their sister for college, they're giving this to their mother, 
for the rent they're giving this. And it really is, I mean, you pay a Filipino late, man, I'm telling you, they're not going to stick around for very long. Plain and simple. Yeah, I, I, I know that. And that, that happens just in generally in any industry. If, I, if I'm working with tradespeople, they love it when you pay on time, especially when I was running my other Dragon Boat business. As soon as I paid all my supplies on time, you get the deliveries right earlier than expected. So they know oh, yeah, it's, absolutely. A, it's the same relationship. So yeah, big, big tip there. Make sure you look after your staff by paying them on time. So <laughs> That's it. That's it. And we actually have staff, to give you an idea, we have virtual assistants that work with Lyft to Sell. Uh, whose virtual bosses are, say, in the U.S. or the U.K. or wherever. And you would be surprised. And this is actually down to me telling our clients to do these types of things because it does keep our VAs happy okay. and with us instead of working for another company, is that, you know, I say to them, after you've developed a relationship with them, if they do a really, really good job on a major task or major project for you, don't just say thank you. Yes, say thank you. Of course. But do it in a way that they're really going to remember. We've had flowers delivered at the office. We've had FedEx packages with books and DVDs in them. Mm. We've had, um, oh God, we actually had one, I swear this is true. And I wanted, I asked the guy if I could do a press release about it because it is just PR magic, something like this, but he would never let me do it. Um, we actually had a relationship between a virtual boss and a VA developed so enrichly that he asked his VA to be present at his wife's birth via Skype. <laughs> I swear not. I kid you not. He actually, uh, and the reason why, I'll tell you why. The reason why is because the VA, the VA actually um, was a registered nurse oh. here in the Philippines, left the nursing industry to come and work in a call center environment, and she... Um, because she was doing the, the, the boss himself was actually traveling all the time and all the rest of it, she developed quite a relationship and quite a rapport with the wife. So, you know, she would talk about their kids' schooling and doing this, doing that, and all sorts of stuff. So, quite a relationship built up, and she was there for the birth. Wow. She was that, there. That's... Probably not for the ultimate conclusion yeah, of the birth, but <laughs> it's large, the that. large majority of. It, yeah, yeah. It, it, was a, it was a U.S. client. I wasn't on the shift that night, but I do, I do remember several of the staff laughing and joking about it the next day and saying, you know, why can't I do things like that? That's such an easy job. <laughs> Being at a birth, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that is amazing. That, that, that's fantastic. Some of the stuff that you shared is definitely gold. That story there is just... In itself is cold. <laughs> well, after five years in business, if you don't have a few stories like that to tell, then you haven't done a very good job running your business, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's plenty more stories to come, which we'll share with the audience another time. I think we should probably even have one podcast, just story after story. Just for story. <laughs> yeah. Story time with Chris and Tyrone. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. All right, well, Chris, I wanted to wrap this up now and uh, let the audience know that uh, they can still get in contact with you. You're obviously someone who is very easy to talk to, which I found getting to know you over this short period of time. So how, how yep. can people get in contact with you, Chris? Uh, they can do it via the blog, plain and simple. It's uh, virtualbusinesslifestyle.com. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter uh, and Facebook. And... Um, you can get all the links and everything on for the YouTube channel. I do quite a bit of video posting and things like that. So uh, actually, if you guys are interested in virtual assistants out uh, out there on your readership, um, I have uh, 10 video clips, very short condensed, about two minutes each, that I shot when I was uh, on a beautiful paradise island here called Barakai uh, at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my, my, my top 10 virtual video tips uh, or virtual assistant video tips. So you can find them on YouTube. But yeah, just go to the blog, virtualbusinesslifestyle.com. Everything else is there. I'll definitely put those links down the bottom and then so make sure people can get there. So it was a pleasure to be able to awesome. do this podcast interview with you and I hope that the audience has benefited quite a lot from this. So yeah, thanks very much again, Chris. And if no anyone wants, wants to find any more podcasts out or listen to anything similar to this, just simply go to tyronshum.com. And my name's Tyron Shum from tyronshum.com. Have a great day and we'll catch up soon.